The images in the following program are highly sensitive and may be as disturbing to viewers as they were to us. However, we have to show the truth about animal cruelty. Hello, intelligent viewers, and welcome to Animal World, our co-inhabitants. On this episode of the Stop Animal Cruelty series, we feature Dr. Michael Greger, an American physician specializing in clinical nutrition who is a vegan, meaning he follows an animal-free diet. Dr. Greger is also an author and internationally recognized speaker on public health issues who currently serves as Director of Public Health and Animal Agriculture for the Humane Society of the United States, a highly respected U.S. animal welfare organization. In his most recent book, Bird Flu, A Virus of Our Own Hatching, Dr. Greger discusses how consumption of animal products and the widespread inhumane practice of factory farming pose serious threats to global public health. One of Dr. Greger's chief concerns is the emergence of new forms of influenza viruses, which frequently originate from factory farmed animals who are made to live in utterly appalling conditions. Many of the plagues that have infected humanity for centuries actually emerged from animals in the first place. Now certainly in the last 30 years or so, about three quarters of all new emerging human infectious diseases have come from the animal kingdom, have come from the way in which we've changed either their habitats or the way in which we formed them. The origin of the swine flu virus that has caused a worldwide pandemic was from pigs confined in squalid factory farms in North Carolina, USA. However, other diseases also arise from the sickening way in which pigs and other farmed animals are raised. An investigative report by Prevention Magazine in the U.S. revealed that a high percentage of factory farm workers test positive for the deadly antibiotic-resistant Staphylococcus superbug MRSA or methicillin-resistant Staph aureus, which can cause serious skin infections leading to life-threatening organ damage. Dr. Greger explains how the meat industry spreads the dangerous MRSA infection to the community. In the past, the only people that used to get MRSA infections were either people in the hospital or people visiting people in the hospital. But then all of a sudden, there started to appear cases of MRSA in people that had no contact with the medical care settings, so-called community-acquired MRSA. In the Netherlands, they found very high rates of MRSA infection among people that worked among pigs and among the pigs themselves. In these intensive animal feed operations, antibiotics are given on a daily basis to make livestock grow faster and, ironically, to prevent illnesses caused by the very conditions in which the animals are kept. In the U.S. alone, 70% of all antibiotics produced are given to farm animals just to keep them briefly alive in stressful and extremely inhumane conditions. Just this year in 2009, we finally did the first testing of pigs and pig farmers here in the United States approximately half of pig farmers and half of pigs that have been tested here in the United States are infected with MRSA, which really raises the question, could these farms and these farming environments be leading to these community-acquired infections? MRSA can be spread by infected farm and slaughterhouse workers who become carriers, as well as through the preparation of meat containing MRSA. we looked at retail pork in Louisiana and found that pork samples bought right from the supermarket also had MRSA on it. People may handle it and 
should one touch a meat sample that has MRSA and then unwittingly touch their mucous membranes, their eyes, nose, and mouth, if they happen to rub their eyes or something, then they could become infected and could be carriers of this disease and then spread it to their family, spread it to their pets, and spread it to other people. And so that's why it not only is a food safety risk, but is a, a public health risk as well. And MRSA is only one of many multi-drug resistant pathogens. Another dangerous epidemic comes from egg consumption. The method by which eggs are produced is a story of callousness and cold-heartedness. There's now an, an epidemic of egg-borne salmonella here in the United States. Over 100,000 Americans every year come, become sick from salmonella they got from eggs. And it's the way we now raise animals in terms of egg production by the hundreds of thousands um, in a single building, what are called battery cages, these small barren wire enclosures um, extending down long rows and windowless sheds. It can be literally up to a million birds in a single shed. You keep animals like that, and no wonder salmonella and these other pathogens are so rife through these facilities and can create a food-borne salmonella hazard um, in the actual food products. Dr. Greger next shares an important but little-known fact about the long-term effects of contracting salmonella. You get infected with salmonella once, you can have what's called reactive arthritis, chronic arthritis for the rest of your life. When we return, Dr. Greger will further explain how these unconscionable, concentrated animal feeding operations create threats to human health. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. We've changed the way animals are raised by the billions around the world, and it's leading to severe human disease. The images in the following program are highly sensitive and may be as disturbing to viewers as they were to us. However, we have to show the truth about animal cruelty. This is Stop Animal Cruelty on Supreme Master Television. Dr. Michael Greger is a vegan, physician and author, and the Director of Public Health and Animal Agriculture for the Humane Society of the United States. He is speaking with us today about the public health threat posed by dangerous factory farms in terms of facilitating the transmission of pathogens such as the swine flu virus. These so-called factory farms are a public health menace. Think of a uh, mad cow disease, for example, where, again, industrial farming practices led to the emergence of a human disease. We were uh, feeding slaughterhouse waste, blood, and manure to farm animals, turning them not only into meat eaters, but to cannibals as well. And then we took downed animals, animals too sick uh, or injured to even stand, and fed them to people. And now, again, uh, we have variant creutzfeldt jakob disease, kind of the human equivalent of mad cow disease. Again, how we treat animals can impact humans. Intensive animal agricultural practices even contaminate our vegetable crops and create potentially fatal illnesses such as E. coli. Even if you aren't eating the meat, uh, the manure runoff from these facilities can affect spinach, in fact, the uh, vegetables that people eat. Pandemics linked to meat consumption need not always start on factory farms. The deadly AIDS-causing virus, known as HIV, has long been linked to consuming bushmeat from chimpanzees. In a recent study, English and French researchers discovered a new strain of HIV-1 the predominant type of HIV worldwide, which is passed to humans through the eating of gorilla flesh. The 
the deforestation in Africa um, was uh, the transnational timber corporations hacking deep into the rainforest, dragging along a hungry migrant workforce who survived on bushmeat, these live animals killed for food. And so someone butchered a chimpanzee a few decades ago. 25 million people are dead because of that practice. We can stop that practice. And so it's the combination of the destruction of animal habitat um, and the consumption of wild animals that led to the emergence of a number of diseases, such as HIV AIDS, and these hemorrhagic fever viruses, which otherwise we would not have come in contact with. Dr. Greger provides other examples of how humankind's horrific abuse of animals has led to disease. The SARS virus was traced to these live animal markets in Asia. Um, the, uh, the spread of monkeypox, for example, was thanks to the exotic pet trade, which spread monkeypox from the jungles of West Africa to Wisconsin in 2003. This virus causing relapsing brain infections, a contagious respiratory virus killing 40% of the people it infects. In 2005, the world's largest pork producer, China, suffered an unprecedented outbreak of an emerging pig pathogen, Strep Suis, the deadliest, largest outbreak in history. The World Health Organization blamed these intensive confinement conditions. The same thing with the Nipah virus in Malaysia. Never could that virus have emerged if it wasn't for these intensive confinement conditions, according to leaders in the field. Similarly, the spread of these multi-drug resistant bacteria on these farms. Throughout history, exploiting animals has led to devastating health problems for humans. Many of the common scourges of humanity actually arose from animals 10,000 years ago when we first domesticated them. For example, rinderpest from, uh, from uh, ruminants such as cattle and sheep turned into the measles virus, the human measles virus, now thought of as a relatively benign disease over the last 150 years, has killed 200 million people. And in a sense, all those human deaths can ultimately be traced back just a few hundred generations to the taming of the first cattle. Similarly, whooping cough, or pertussis, came from pigs originally. Leprosy came from water buffalo, the common cold from horses. But when we brought animals into the barnyard, unfortunately, they brought their diseases with them. There is a strong connection between our horrendous treatment of animals, our destruction of the natural environment, and dangerous virulent diseases. Argentina dramatically expanding its beef industry at the expense of its rainforest. And there we discovered the deadly Hunan virus, or rather it discovered us, the cause of Argentina hemorrhagic fever. And since then, the so-called hamburgerization of the Amazonian tropical rainforest has uncovered new hemorrhagic fever viruses all across the continent. Uh, switching to the other side of the world, uh, deforestation in Africa uh, led to the emergence of a number of other hemorrhagic fever vi viruses, such as Lassa virus, Rift Valley fever, and of course, Ebola. The ultimate way to overcome these pathogens that stem from the harming of our animal friends is the organic vegan diet. Eating a plant-based diet, you just, you have to give it a try. Once you experience the benefits, it's unthinkable to go back. Our deepest thanks go to Dr. Michael Greger for giving us his expert perspective on the relationship between humanity's cruel treatment of animals on factory farms, the destruction of biodiversity, animal product consumption, and public health. We also salute him for championing the compassionate vegan lifestyle. Thank you, kind viewers, for joining us for the concluding part of our interview with Dr. Michael Greger. Up next, is enlightening entertainment after noteworthy news. May all animals on our planet receive our utmost love and respect.
For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash stop dash animal dash cruelty.